Okay, can you introduce yourself and briefly summarise your stations and what you've done? Okay, hi, I'm Doug Lyon, I teach video production at Brighton Uni, uh, but in my previous and kind of parallel career I have been a radio trainer and station manager, so I started in the mid-80s doing reports for local BBC, moved on to producing stuff for Festival Radio in Brighton and then kind of did a whole procession of community radio stations, um, some in Brighton, some up north, and then a lot of workshops with uh, disadvantaged youth and so I kind of worked with a lot of different client groups um, or different types of people using radio as a format to kind of communicate around all kinds of issues and help join the dots and help improve the quality of people's lives. So from my experience I understand that community radio can benefit people's mental health. Do you believe that it works? Give you some examples. Okay, so I specifically have run two sets of workshops for mental health clients. One was with Community Links up in Leeds who um, offer safe uh, halfway housing for people who have come out of long term mental health institutionalisation. So I did two sets of workshops with their clients and the staff who works with the clients. And that was a really crucial aspect to the workshop. So I actually mixed up the staff and the clients in to two groups of like five or six. So there were two radio shows being made and they used each other as interviewees and I made it so that the staff weren't in charge of the clients. They, they became guests on the show that were run by the uh, mental health clients. So I did another workshop with CAMS, Children and Adolescents with Mental Health Services. That's not right, is it? Anyway, you work that out. They wanted something that was a little bit different and that became very much about mental health issues, except that there was an intergenerational aspect to it as well. So I had an elders group who were in their late 60s, 70s, and a teenage group, and each group had to make a radio show for the other group. So the young people, it's like, don't be putting all your hip hoppy kind of whatever you listen to stuff on it, you've got to find out what the other group want to listen to, and vice versa. It was really very sweet, very wonderful workshop that. I'd like to have done more like that. There's no doubt in my mind whatsoever that community radio as a format helps people with mental health difficulties. Absolutely no doubt in my mind. And I've got numerous stories that I can wheel out. But I would say, in principle, that something happens around giving people a voice, uh, respecting people enough to listen to what they're saying, recording it or transmitting it really kind of turns the value up of that. I think for people listening at home to hear, you know, it's one of the great um, sad things of our societies. There's a lot of people at home on antidepressants staring at a wall, staring at a telly. Nobody knows they're there. So if you can reach out through a box in somebody's living room and say, you know, hey, there's other people like you and actually they're only around the corner and why don't you come down one day and say hello to us and, you know, that's almost unique I think I mean I, I, I go as far as to say I think it could be wheeled out as a a form of advocacy or therapy or whatever you want to call it everywhere you know like Meals on Wheels or you know carers who go around and help somebody with their shopping it's like I, I think it's such a I also think it's very ancient. It's like, you can call it community radio, but actually what it is is the oral tradition. Before we invented all of this stuff, all these you know, media things, everything was carried by storytelling. You told somebody about something, they told somebody else about it. So the elders in the village would have the kind of wisdom of what was going on. You'd have people who'd tell everybody else what was going on. So I think I think there's something really important about talking to each other, which TV and film and all of that world is very obsessed with being sexy and good-looking and kind of 
it was very fake the world of TV and film. I think even real, you know, reality TV has got nothing to do with reality. You listen to community radio; it is, it's very real. There's no kind of policy media stuff to it. It's real people talking to other real people about stuff that matters. You could argue that a lot of what the radio is 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 a little bit too every day you know it's like oh so ethel down the corner's got a flower display outside of a shop but i th really think there's a place in the world for that kind of local small scale thing not everything has to be kind of big and massive and dramatic so advocacy empowerment giving people a voice listening to people cherishing them and nurturing them allowing them to be part of a group uh, uh, as creedy said a family um, it's really magical. It, it's so magical. I've seen it so many times where people come in depressed, pissed off with where they live, haven't got a future, no hope, no ambition, and within a few weeks they're like sparky and excited and wanting to do stuff with their lives. I mean, what? how could you possibly object to that? Why would it not be everywhere? That's the next question, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Why do, you, why do you think it isn't used as a form of therapy and then like, what would it take to make the service available to a lot of people? Well, the thing is, we're, we're, as a society now, we're very cruel. You know, if you look at the way elders are treated, most of around the world, you know, it's a very common thing around the world that you are brought up by your parents and then in return, as they get older, you expect to be looking after them until they die and then you have a bit of your life where you don't have to look after your parents and that's the eternal cycle. A lot of cultures really look after their grandparents and their grandparents know the grandchildren and uncles and aunties are around. We've kind of so fragmented in our society, we throw our old people away. The people who fought for our freedom, literally, are, are dying in rest homes with somebody visiting them once a month. The way that we treat mental health is very similar we kind of want to brush it under the carpet we don't want to it's a bit like at the moment in Chechen the, the you know the sort of witch hunt for gay men like a hundred gay men have been kind of hauled in and the the guy in there is saying we don't believe that we have gay people in our country but we don't have them it's that level of thinking it's like Okay, so something doesn't fit with your belief system or the way you think things should work or doesn't make you look good, so just pretend it's not there. And I would go as far as to say that, you know, that the state of our NHS at the moment and the way that we're not looking after vulnerable people in our society, people are dying. You know, people are dying on the streets in Brighton and you're stepping over dying people to do your shopping. You know, it's, it's, um, it's devastating. You know, we're one of the richest countries in the world, so to my mind, there's no financial reason why we couldn't wheel this out as a programme right across the country, everywhere. But ideologically, that's a whole other thing, and I don't think that's where you kind of want me to go off on one of your projects, but I, I don't think we live in a climate where the government or the powers that be are very interested in empowering or looking after people. I don't think that's their interest. So, you know, that maybe something that comes around another time maybe with another government maybe in 10 years time daisy it'll come round, and you'll be in a position to do something about it and help people in that way but in the meantime you've just got to keep the flag flying really and keep it all ticking over in a sentence can you sum up the value of community radio for people with mental health issues it is so in a sentence the value of community radio for people with mental health issues is that it gives people a voice, it allows them to participate in a community that is non-judgmental and positive, it allows the opportunity for people to be enthusiastic and share things that they might have felt like they were on their own about, it allows people to talk about things that they might have felt very ashamed about and realise that they don't have to feel so stigmatised by it. And it kind of allows people a chance to have fun with themselves. I mean, all of the mental health client groups I've worked with, they're so fun, they're so stigmatised by their status that 
they're very open people, very kind of communicative and given half a chance, more than happy to spill the beans and talk about anything. So actually, in my experience, they're one of the easiest groups that I've worked with to get to communicate and the communication is really significant, it's really important. So it's not talking about Kim Kardashian's bum, you know, it's talking about real issues, about making sense of your life and being happy, which is ultimately, I think, what we all want. I think everybody has got mental health issues. I agree with Creedy, I know this isn't a sentence. I agree with Creedy that we hold something up as a thing, mental health, when actually what we're talking about is mental unhealth. Well, maybe it's not possible to be a completely mentally healthy person like Hussein Bolt is a brilliant physical person. Maybe it is only possible if you join the dots between people and you create a support network that brings everybody up. Is that a sound bite? Yeah, that's good. If you had a magic, this is the last one, then you'd be going, if you had a magic wand that could make community radio what you like, what would, you be, what would it be like? If I had a magic wand and I could make community radio what I'd like, I would have a community radio station set up in every single town and village in this country in the same way that we've got churches. I mean, you know, that, they were our community centres. Every single village and town in this country, we've got a church. A church and a pub, you know, they were the centres of our communities. And we've thrown away the church and we've shut down all the pubs. So we really need something that locally brings people together but also broadcasts it to a wider area and now everything can be put out on the web so everybody in the world can hear it. What better way would there be to, to do that? I think that would be wonderful. Have it everywhere. Boom.